Good morning, friends, and welcome to Christ Church for another Rose Garden Conversation. I'm fortunate to be joined this morning by Brendan Walsh. Brendan's a longtime member of Christ Church, grew up here, uh, was part of our choir, uh, eventually returned, has been a vestry member, and uh, continues now as our chair of our investment committee. Uh, but perhaps most importantly, uh, Brendan is a part of our Summer Starters program in partnership with Karsten's Academy. Uh, for the last uh, 10 weeks, we've been partnering with Karsten's to provide uh, 56 breakfast baskets each week to students and families that um, are in need as this COVID-19 has struck Detroit and Michigan. Uh, so we've been, uh, I've been excited by the program, our opportunity to extend uh, the love of Christ to the Jefferson Chalmers community, at least to a few homes in the Jefferson Chalmers community, uh, to proclaim that God is here even in the midst of this pandemic. Um, so Brendan, it's great to, to have you with us. Thank you for joining me this morning. I, I wonder, could you tell us a little bit about the program and kind of how it's being executed? How do we make it happen? Sure. So. Um, there are, it's, it's interesting because there's a lot of moving parts yep. in a socially distant world. True. So um, it starts with uh, Village Market, who's um, gracious enough to um, help us out with getting this, the, the supplies for this um, and providing them at cost. Fantastic. Great. Um, that has been, it's been a huge help. Um, and then um, it's the parish who's been, who feel called to serve and um, we have individuals who will come in and they'll set all of the food out and put them into bags. Mm -hmm. um, and then on Saturday mornings, um, it started with um, uh, Mike Hicks reaching out to me and saying, you know, would you, would you like to help out with the, with the Summer Starters program? And um, we had had such a great experience with the Summer Starters um, in a normal c scenario. Yeah. Um, you know, there, I, there was a time, especially at the start of the coronavirus, where you just felt powerless. There was nothing mm -hmm. that we could do. And so this seemed like just some sort of action to take where we can do something. Yeah. Um, and, and something in a really meaningful way when you think about these children who don't have access to food on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, so it started with, um, you know, uh, me c coming on Saturday and, and um, meeting Joseph and Joseph having the, the bags all ready for us. And then um, I've actually now helped uh, Joseph. So just this morning, I, I show up and get a cup of coffee with Joseph. And, uh, you know, he, we uh, hand out the bags to the families who come and from our parish. And then they head out and, and deliver them to the community. It's great to see the different parts come together. We've got a, a small team that comes, uh, rotates, of course, but they come and they build all the bags. Uh, and then another team comes, a couple uh, come out and set everything up ready for uh, Saturday morning. And then I know you, I think Eric Trainum as well has occasionally been a partner in that, come and set everything out for the volunteers, the delivery team that eventually comes, picks up their bags. I think you guys literally load them into the car for them. We do, right? so we have our masks on, we'll have gloves, we load them in and then spray it with uh, disinfectant just to be safe. Yes. And then, uh, and then everyone's on their way. And then so. what happens on the delivery side? Because I think you're also part of the delivery team. Yeah. So um, so I've uh, taken, because the weather's been so great, I've taken to riding my bike with our okay. with our ch former child carrier, which is now my grocery carrier, uh -huh. um, ride home and then put them in the car. And then um, <laughs> either I will go out or um, I've actually uh, tried to take uh, my children out. Okay. Um, and we go to, we have, in our family, we have three homes uh, where we deliver food. Um, you know, one has four children, one has one child, and one has two. Um, reach out to them in advance and let them know that we're coming out. And then, um, yeah, we drop off the food for the week. And then, uh, and then they oh, you know, they have breakfast for the week. What's that response been like when you make those phone calls? Um, it's been really good. So it's, you know, initially it was, you know, phone calls and it's evolved to text, but, um, you know, it's, uh, I think it was initially just kind of surprised, like, oh, huh, that's, that's, that's interesting. And then, you know, and then um, it's been, uh, it's been good, you know, when we've had a chance to interact, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're you know, I think, grateful that we, we can, can do something. And I'm grateful that we can help. Mm -hmm. What do you, th what do you think your kids are experiencing as they're kind of participating vicariously through you? So I hope that their eyes are getting open both to a 
how fortunate we are yeah. to live in our community, but also how much um, we can help, but also how much more help yeah. there needs to be out there. Yeah. Um, where, you know, they've had comments of, you know, we'll, I'll ask them what they're thinking if we're yeah. driving into the neighborhood. They're saying, well, just looking at the houses. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, it's, you know, I, I was driving with Bennett and um, one of the families lives by an old school that's closed. Okay. And I pointed it out to them because it's a really neat old building. Yes. I said, well, why is it closed? Um, and then it opened up into a broader discussion around the neighborhood and history and, you know, opened up a lot of yeah. broad discussion. So I think it's, I hope it has been um, educational for them. But also, just that they see that we can, you know, we have the opportunity to do a lot. Yeah. And so close to our home. Mm -hmm. I remember a conversation I had with Sam uh, maybe a year or two years ago when we first started Summer Starters. And he and I delivered um, the food from Christchurch down to Crossroads. And that was his first experience at Crossroads. And we went in and, you know, helped unload everything. Uh, and once we were driving back, he, he just made the observation. I said, what did you see? What did you think? He said, everyone was black. And I, it was one of the first, I think, awarenesses for him of the racial disparity, particularly around poverty. Um, and just to have his eyes begin to be open to this crisis still in our society, I think, um, and I, I imagine perhaps, um, but I certainly hope for us as a community that this is raising our awareness to um, some of the inequalities that still exist, particularly around racial lines in our community. I wonder, uh, what about for you? How has this um, impacted you? That's a really good question. Um, it's been a very eye-opening experience personally mm. for me. Um, so especially, you know, this all started around the coronavirus and COVID-19. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then now in, you know, since, since the death of George Floyd mm -hmm. and, just, uh, and, and, the, and, the, and the protests and the, the discussion that's going on about race and racism um, and our privilege, mm -hmm. um, it's... You know, it, it's it's been this interesting progression of my own eyes being open to my own privilege, mm. and and frankly, um, just my inherent bias and racism that I've had myself. Mm. Um, I mean, the weekend of, of Memorial Day. Yeah, I went out to deliver the you know the meals like I normally do, and you know, I've been, been having these thoughts of you know how do I be better? How do I you know, how do I, how, what can I do? Yes. And I went to one of the family's homes and I immediately had a moment of, there were, there were some black gentlemen outside. It was a beautiful day. It was Memorial Day weekend. They were grilling. But then I had this moment where I tightened up and I thought, ah, oh, it's still, it's still there. Yes. Um, and so that was a real challenge, right? I mean, but I think as we, you know, hopefully we grow and, and, and really lean into this discussion about race and racism and inequality and injustice that we lean into that sense yes. of uncomfort mm -hmm. and learn from it. Yes. Um, and then, and then I had another moment and this is, you know, and frankly, it's a little embarrassing, but you know, I had this moment where I realized that I didn't know the names of the people that I was going mm. to serve. I knew the children's names from the list that we had, but, um, it's just really embarrassing, and so I, I texted them. And I said, "I, you know, I, I have to apologize. You know, I'm, I'm coming out. I want to let you know, but I realized, which, can you share your name with me, right? Um, you know, and, and here I am, and I'm this white knight, right, coming out to help, but I'm actually not connecting mm -hmm. on a personal level with the people that were helping, mm -hmm. um, and so." You know, it's it's just how do we get better, yeah. right? How do I be better? Mm -hmm. um, and so it's been really impactful for me personally that way, mm. um, and just you know, and also just so eye-opening to the inequality and 
just how um, how really awful it is. Yeah. You know, there's one family that the first week that we went to deliver, it was very clear that the house was empty. And I left the food because I wasn't sure. Yeah. Um, and then when we finally connected, we found out that they had moved. And I mean, and this is in 10, 11 weeks. Um, they had moved and then they've moved again. So just to think, the, and they have four children. To think of the instability. Yes. That's just eight minutes away from our front door. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, and so... You know, we were talking, I, Elizabeth, my eldest and I, we went out and we're talking to a family um, last week and you know, we're talking to their, their kids are outside too and they're about the same age as Elizabeth. And you say, well, you know, we might be, we might be moving. And you just think, just, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. It's complicated. It's, it is. It's really, it's, it's difficult, but it's, you know, I hope, you know, again, I just hope to, you know, find personally, the opportunity to grow and yeah well i want to commend you for that and i thank you for that honesty and openness in this conversation uh and in this in this program and and journey uh you know the the issue um and the transformation that we're seeking as a society is not going to happen overnight and it's it's not going to happen within us overnight it's a progression of recognizing the the prejudices or the uh, projections that we have and then beginning to change and that takes a huge amount of humility to just acknowledge I need to change uh, and to, to be willing to look at our society and look at ourselves and I hope uh, and pray and I, I, I believe we will here at Christchurch lead in that kind of conversation because we are a community that impacts not only this church but this community. And I dare say we're a community that impacts Detroit. And so I pray that you and others that are uh, participating in this program continue to find that as a transformational experience uh, and that you can help us and participate in a wider conversation about race and inequality, both in the Gross Point community and even more in the Detroit community. Brendan, thank you for being a part of this, joining me today. Uh, and thank you for leading this conversation with us and helping us to open up and see how we participate in change in Detroit. Thanks a bunch. Thanks for having me. Yeah.